So we could send an unmanned probe to do to, to min this. It'd be okay. We'll give it some science. Maybe not enough. What, what what bit is sticking out? Is it this side? This side over here. It's driving me crazy. Okay, there we go. Um, maybe. There. I'll go hatless. I repeat, hatless. That's being so finicky. Um, but I think we can make it to Duna with an unmanned probe. Get some high value science from that. Plus, it would be awesome. So I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's get designing. Now, um, to, the, to get to Duna, so Duna is the equivalent of Mars in, in this game. To get there in sort of an optimal way, to go from planet to planet, there's, there's sort of, there's these transfer windows that are the sweet spots to make the trip from one planet to another. Um, the big deal with them is they require less fuel and less time to make the trip between the two planets. Um, and there's lots of ways to calculate when the ideal time for that is. Uh, one of the perfectly fine ways to do it, um, although it's not as like precise as some of the others, but it's gonna be fine, um, is the Kerbal Alarm Clock system over here, which can calculate or have various models and things like that for calculating some sort of transfer between two orbital bodies. Um, and as long as it gets us close-ish, it's going to be fine. So we're gonna go from Kerbin to Duna. Um, and so uh, for this, it would be on year one, which is us on day 229. So it's in a little over 200 days is gonna be the ideal time to go. So I'm gonna set an alarm to that. And, um, and I guess we're just gonna fast forward. To, what's the, uh, there we go. It's like, what's the, t the fast forward key? So, blinky, 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 blinky. We're just gonna advance to that time. So we got no other real missions going on right now. I mean, we've got some stuff in orbit. I'm not worried about any contracts expiring or anything like that. It's gonna be okay. Maybe I should have done this before the stream because I might give someone a real headache. Or, you know, we're just having a party. Yeah, let's get the, like, exactly. Let's get the, uh, the Darude Sandstorm emotes. Doots, doots. Rave on Kerbin. Epilepsy warning, I know. Whew, this is also the sort of stuff that's probably not very good for bandwidth. Uh, but you know, that's fine. No, I don't have the Kerbal Construction Time mod um, set up. So there's no actual time to like actually roll the thing out to the uh, um, to the platform or anything like that. I've played with it before, it's interesting, but meh. Okie dokie, and we're right around there. So again, you know, um, alarm clock's not perfect for a variety of different reasons. And ooh, ooh, um, uh, and, and our stuff, but it's gonna get us close to wherever the ideal transfer window might be, and so it's gonna be fine. So we'll go ahead and delete and close that alarm, and that's gonna be groovy. So the ATAR, hey, read my sub notification. Ooh, I'll have to find it. I wanna give love as a bonus, in case you're read me out twice. <laughs> uh, a control, how come, where's control F? There we go. I don't think I had the focus set right. Oh, there it is. Uh, Quillotine. This is basically only the second live stream I've seen since I apologize for not subbing at PDXCon. Also, I'm just about to go away to look after a dog. PS, still hyped for the CK2 board game. Super hyped for the CK2 board game. Uh, again, I've played the, um, the beta. Oh, we got Hobo Serenity with 10 gifts. Thank you very much, Hobo. That's awesome. Sweet. Uh, yeah, I played the, uh, the demo. I, I took one of the, the demo boxes of the CK2 board game home with me. Um, we played it here with some friends. We had a great time. Can't wait for the full print version, um, to be in my, my greedy little hands. Also really excited for, um, uh, words are hard. Uh, I'm just going to fast forward to the morning because it's prettier. Um, for Holy Fury, which now has an announced date. So hopefully I'll get a code for that. Well, it'll probably still be at least a couple of weeks, but hopefully soon. Booyah! All right. Uh, Hanzu, no, the FFL2 technically didn't, didn't end. I'll probably do it as a standalone video at some point uh, when I get around to, like, the desire to, like, grind some of the RNG or maybe just grind up some fights for some, some more hit point buffer or something. I don't know. Let's go and design our spaceship. So what I want to do here is I'm not going to send a, a, a twin payload this time. I'm not going to send something that's going to stay in orbit as a relay satellite and something that's going to go on the ground. It's going to be a one, like a single satellite. I want to send a satellite to Duna, put it in polar orbit around Duna. It's going to act both as a, a future relay uh, and also it's going to do some science for us, including surface scans. I'm really pumped for that sort of thing. So that's what we're going to do here. Rovers and stuff like that, I want to do in the future. Um, the thing is, if we already have a satellite in orbit, then the rover could communicate with it, or we might still send a paired mission then with a rover plus satellite so that we can get, like, different type of coverage, you know, put one in, in, um, 
equatorial orbit or something like that, we will see. Uh, and later, we'll basically have to wait until we get more rocketry options, including um, the advanced fuel systems option, which allows us to do asparagus staging and, and things like that, which we don't have right now. So our payload can't be, can't be massive. That's why I'm thinking just a single thing. How did the scanner perform on the moon? It's still there. It's probably, at this point, since we just fast forwarded, it probably has tons of information ready to send back, which is gonna be exciting. Ooh. Ah. Isn't Duna already? Um, no, that we really, you haven't really missed much. It's just, you can go to Duna really early. We haven't even gone to Minmus. I think we landed on the moon, and then didn't we burn up on return? We had transmitted some of the signs though, but it's fine. Duna's easy. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got more whiskey and chocolate coming in. Let me refresh that. And yeah, we'll talk about our design over here. Uh, probe core, probe core. Probably the probe dodyne out too. Who is it? It's my brokers. Hey, thank you very much. A little something to thank Twitch for finally letting us sub for mobile. I'm so happy. Oh, really? Oh, that's so fantastic. Oh, shoot. I'm happy you let me know, Mo. And I'm also happy for the money. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated. Which one is Duna? Duna's basically Mars. So what we're doing is we're going to send the satellite to Mars. So we're gonna get the basics. So we got the probe core here, which is gonna be our little robotic brain that's gonna help us fly this thing. Uh, we're gonna want a little bit of extra electrical power. Um, a fair bit more, like I'm wondering about building it to this size scale, the, the, the 1.5 meter scale. Um, I mean, we don't have to. Like we could just use a stack of this. It's not like we need a ton of battery power. Um, if we're gonna be in polar orbit and relatively high, we're almost never gonna be eclipsed, so. We don't need infinite amounts of power. That's probably gonna be plenty. The biggest question mark is actually gonna be how we're gonna stick the rest of the devices on there. Now, last time we sort of got away somehow. I think, did we put the antenna in first? That's 2G. This one here is the 15G antenna. And yeah, it's like a much bigger size. And I think we have to send the 15G antenna. And it's so big that we may as well just design for the, the bigger size format. It's just massive. So the probe core is gonna be small, but that's fine. We'll just send the big battery pack, but we were able to sort of like weirdly get multiple things. I don't know. We might just mount it on the side or in here like this might be okay. I mean, it'll look a little bit funny, but it's not like it won't work. You know, if we do something like this. Definitely needs RCS. Well, I mean, I think like um, reaction wheels are gonna be fine, but yes, we're gonna need something. Um, I don't need the big one. That's just gonna add more weight for nothing. So we're gonna use the small one and do that. Um, of course, we'll need solar panels and all that kind of stuff too. Um, what was I gonna think? Oh yeah, um, more science experiments. So the two hot thermometer can transmit for 100%. Uh, magnetometer, I think will be fine to send along with this. Something like that is gonna be okay. Uh, press mat, I mean, we'll always return an answer of zero, but apparently our scientists like that. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. I think this will be the entirety of our little science experiment that we send over. Yeah, the battery is huge, 100%. It is ludicrously big. Um, and maybe adding too much weight, but I was like, well, we're building this dimension. What is the weight difference? That's actually something we do care about a little bit. So this is 0 0.05 tons versus 0 0.01. I mean, I guess we could, because since we really don't need that much power, we could still do this. I mean, I guess that's fine. I mean, we can still design to the, the higher size, but still use this. And I guess one of the things is for this actual like flight segment, um, like we can, Hmm. Could just throw a little ant on there. It's not powerful, it's a slow burn, but it's really fuel efficient. I mean, shit, that's 1700 Delta V right there. I don't know. The thing is, the Terrier is more efficient. I think what I'll do is I'll just use this and that. I guess I could have convert, like, checked other things. 
So this is less Delta V than the previous setup. What's the weight comparison though? Why is Duna easier than getting to Minimus? It's not. Um, but an unmanned mission to Duna is easier than a manned mission to, to Minmus when you have life support mods. That's our problem. And it's not that we couldn't pack enough like oxygen and water and all other thing. It's we didn't have enough space and our people would go crazy and like, I don't know, kill themselves or something like that um, on the way. So we'd have to design something else that would require a lot more launch weight and so on and so forth. Hey, it's Bongo Fluffernutter, who's got a great name. Uh, thanks for teaching me Kerbal Rocket Science. I bought this game a year ago and gave up because I'm not smart. Oh, now I have a Kerbal stranded on the moon. Progress. Hey, well, stranding Kerbals is like one of the most important parts of the game, baby. Um, I'm going to turn on a rigid attachment to, oh, not rigid attachment, uh, auto strut to the root part over there. So this will be nice and solid. And there you go. This is, oh, plus solar panels. Three is going to be more than enough. Like, more than enough. Because it can afford to, like, wait for recharging and things like that and transmission. But yeah, I think that's that. We need a name for this bad boy. We can use a champagne bottle for it. KSP Smart Future. Oh, excellent. Except this is going to be the Petra Space Program Smart Future. And I do have the new flag in. Check it out. Petra, the Planetary Exploration Tracking and Reconnaissance Agency. That's us. We are the Petra. Uh, Autostrut is not a mod. It's actually part of the base game. I believe you have to enable the option and the thing. But yeah, it'll put like just like little invisible struts in there for you. Um, which is handy to like to something you choose where it's starting to so this is just the same as if I put struts from here and connected it to there Except I don't have to click a bunch safety lights. Oh my god. You're right. We almost forgot the safety lights This mission would have been inherently unsafe That's gonna put right there excellent. Okay, whoo Saved all right, let's figure out how to get this bad boy into orbit. This dish is really big um, da, 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 da. so we only need, we only need a little over 5k Delta V in like with everything is perfectly ideal to enter into Duna orbit from Kerbal. It doesn't take that much. Probably I'm going to base the mission around 6k Delta V, uh, maybe a little bit more if it turns out to be fairly convenient to squeeze out a little bit. It's because it's unlikely that all the burns will be perfect. It's unlikely we'll have the exact ascent profile that we need, the exact transfer window, etc., etc., etc. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, put a decoupler. That's a small one, right? No, we need uh, the TD-18. Uh, nope. Is it this? Oh, because I've, I've resorted things in a weird way. Okay. Um, good. And then... doesn't go there. It needs to be a little bit bigger, huh? Okay. Ten is huge, I know. But it needs to be able to reach from freaking Mars. Um, I mean, maybe we could do with a lower G antenna, but this is the biggest relay antenna we've got, and I figure, what the hell? I don't know how to do the math on that, and it depends on, like, what your tracking station's level is and all kinds of different things. So I was like, whatever, we'll just stick the biggest antenna on there. It'll be fine. Uh, this, come on, this is a little excessive. So this is gonna be our terrier stage to help us sort of go orbital and, and do some of the, uh, the on the way flying. And then we're gonna have our initial ascent phase, our stage over here. Swivel engine. How's that looking? Surface level thrust is a little low, but not too bad. I think, though, this would be a good application for two extras on the side. So I'm, I'm not using the tri coupler this time, but it's going to be okay. Um, have all those go at the same time. There you go. 1.42 surface level thrust. Total delta V is 6,500, which should be more than overkill to get us into Dune in orbit, assuming I read the charts correctly. Should be. 
There's no such thing as too much overkill. I think this is gonna be just enough overkill. Uh, we'll use these little steerable winglets over here, like that, and like that for the first part. Double check the staging, this into that. We can combine these, that'd be okay. Um, at some point, this will get staged, which is fine. Um, we'll probably just manually deploy and do that. I don't like the size of this. Aerodynamically, that's gonna make things a lot rougher, but it should be okay. Will it be stable on the launch pad? It probably would be, but I'm gonna go and put the uh, launch stability enhancers over here, and we'll put you in the same stage over there. How have I forgotten anything important, you guys? Yeah, we don't have asparagus tech. We could recover the engines. Actually, we probably can recover these um, fairly easily. Those are the drogues. There we go. I'll force some of those guys over there. That's probably gonna work. Uh, we'll just get you combined with this over here and just set the pressure to something like 0.3 or something. 0.3-ish. Okay, done. I like things better when we actually left a Kerbal on Duna. <laughs> That's something you can't do with a life support mod. But yeah, we did we did leave a Kerbal stranded on Duna for like 10 years? It was something amazing like that. Uh, we do have a reaction wheel in our probe core over here. Um, it's not very powerful, so it'll be a little slow with some of it, but I mean, we're not gonna need it for the ascent because we've got gimbling engines and we've got uh, aerodynamic stuff, so that's gonna be okay. I think we're okay. How accessible is this game? You know, it's actually, uh, I do have like a tutorial series on the Ubtubs. Um, the start is very accessible. Like, um, getting like getting into orbit your first time, that will be the biggest challenge, unless of course you watch the tutorial videos, which explain like just some of the, some of the math and reasoning behind it. But it's actually not too bad. Strut your stuff. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, let's have these parts here strutted to the heaviest part, and you're going to strut to the root part over that way. And actually over here, we'll go ahead and strut that that way. And that should all be pretty damn stable. I think that's fine. I think we'll go. Uh, the mod for the Delta V, I'm using MechJab. You could also use Kerbal Engineer. There's a few others as well. So you don't need any mods to play Kerbal up until the point where you're trying to do more complex that launches to actually other planets, then most likely you really need the breakdown of your Delta V over here. Um, and Kerbal Alarm Clock really helps for some other things too. I mean, those are the only sort of most required ones. I think we can launch with this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. ba bump bump What's the most useless item in Kerbal? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so still many mods. Delta V stats is part of a mod, orbital info, that's all coming from MechJeb. And this is also MechJeb stuff over here. We are being told, oops, that's, go away. No, it clicked, th son of a bitch. Wow, that mod is, mod is badly done. When I click the X, it clicks through to go to the space center. And I tried to move the window first and it actually didn't take. So we're gonna go to the space center, and then we're gonna have to click on the base ship again. Loading times usually aren't this bad, but of course I have 30 million mods in here. Did you change the flag? Yes, I did, BB Tech. Okay, phone call. Leave that closed. Yes, there is a list of all the mods you're using. If only there's a way to find out what that might be. It's whiskey and chocolate. It's whiskey and chocolate. So yeah, I'd meant to click on this, which shows you all the experiments you can run right now. Um, mostly I'm not gonna run this right now. The magnetometer, uh, ma magnetometer, which I can never say right for some reason. I think it's the French comes out. Um, it's only 1.2 science, so it's not worth doing that. But yeah, I got a million mods. What is this? It's the real Vion, real Vaughn. Uh, hey Quill, during your last Kerbal stream, I was at Udvar Hazy Air and Space Museum, Washington DC, looking at a real space shuttle. Woo! Guess what was on the cover of the Smithsonian Magazine? That's right, the Petra. God damn it. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, all right, we are gonna go toggle on SAS. We're gonna go full throttle. Go. A Little bit of lag there, that was weird. Okay, sure. 
that's fine. So we're going to go to about 100 meters per second, our standard, and roll about 5 degrees east, start our gravity turn. This thing, again, this is going to act like there's going to be a lot of air resistance off this bit. Um, it's going to act almost like a, a parachute in a way, which is not going to make some of these maneuvers very easy. I'm really concerned about this thing. I'm really happy we've got some excess delta V so that we can be a little bit more gentle with our gravity turn. Um, so we might not gravity turn as aggressively as we'd like, which will make our circularization a little bit more expensive than we would normally like. But if you if we were too aggressive, actually looking pretty okay, uh, then we might end up just flipping out and uh, that would be kind of bad. Thing is definitely uh, gonna want to flip around. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's one of the reasons I use the full aerodynamic fins, and we do have triple gimbling here. And I'm gonna try real hard not to get outside of the prograde marker um, as much as possible. All right, we're actually doing okay. So again, my, my ballpark target generally is at about 15k. I like to be about 45 degrees. We're gonna be a little steeper than that, which is safer, less efficient, but safer and easier to do. Time to apps has already climbed over a minute, which again is a sign that I'm not as, as efficient as I would like to do, but certainly safer. We can afford to be a little bit more aggressive with our turning now. We're getting some heat effects, but the atmosphere is thinning out um, enough that that's, that's not really gonna be a concern. And again, the atmosphere is thinning out again that I'm not as worried about the aerodynamic effects here. So we're gonna move that there and be ready to dump this as soon as this bottom stage runs out of fuel. We could probably dump this right now to save a little bit of weight, but it'll be okay. All right, I'm gonna turn completely sideways now, completely horizontal, which we're presenting more of our side to the wind, which is bad for drag, but you can see it already. We're so thin now that's not a thing. And the more sideways that we go, the better. And we're getting ready to stage. Stage. Thank you. Oh shit, our Apwaps is already 200k. Wow, that's bad. Okay, that's definitely gonna burn up in, in, in orbit here. Whoops. <laughs> I'm super with not watching our Apwapses. We've gone way too high. But that's fine. We're also not terribly flat. Ah, that could have been a lot worse. I'm okay with this. Space! Uh, we still don't have, I believe, the um, the uh, ability to have customizable action groups yet. So we couldn't have bound the, um, the solar panels. We'll see. Um, I see no reason why we couldn't go ahead and uh, deploy our boom here and get some science and transmit it. Excellent. You love that sound. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, retract this, though, because having it be out might make it a little awkward to do our next maneuver. Not all y'all is useful. Well, we're going to get it. MechJab will, um, at some point, give us the ability to automatically deploy those things for us. Uh, we just need to unlock some more technology before we get there. So yeah, so this is a pretty high apoapsis. It's more than we needed, but it's going to be okay. We're going to add a maneuver here, and I'm mostly just using this as a timing reminder. We're going to stretch it. If we were in the 1.5 patch, which was released today, um, we'd actually get a much better burn info timer over here, but I didn't want to use it because on the off chance that the game broke with all my mods and whatnot. Uh, most people have reported that it's mostly going to be fine, but so something like that. So you're, you're, sort, you're stretching out your maneuver until the apoapsis and periapsis start to flip and that's about right. And there's no reason you have to use a maneuver node to circularize. Um, circularizing is pretty easy, but this gives us a better timing. So uh, the burn time will be approximately 43 seconds. So we'll want to start it approximately 21 and a half seconds before we get to the node, uh, which should be fine. We'll do a quick save before you time warp, always. Warp to next maneuver, which I believe will stop us one minute before the maneuver. Mm -hmm. Oh, lights on, you're right. We gotta get the safety lights on. Otherwise we'll be unsafe. Ah, there we go. Whew. We're so much safer now. Okay. Uh, we are 48 seconds from the node. Again, ideally you do about half your burn before the node, about half the burn afterwards. If you're looking, if you've got orbit info like this, if you're burning and the time to apoapsis is increasing, that means you started your burn too early. You know, there's a, there's a bunch of sort of ways you can just sort of eyeball things. Um, I need to actually be pointing prograde. 
or in fact, I could just say something like here, point to the maneuver node as well, which is gonna be effectively the same thing. Node in T minus 27. So we got five seconds about to burn. Two, one, go for burn. Okay. So we're just gonna circularize around Kerbin, around our around Earth here, and then we'll take a look at our situation vis-a-vis -vis Duna. So we're just increasing this. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to keep us orbital prograde. I'm going to kill the actual maneuver because I don't care about the maneuver timing at this point. It was a good way to know like when I'm about to start. But really, all I'm looking for is our periapsis to raise at least over 70. So that way, we um, we are orbital. We're not going to be necessarily circular yet, but we'll be in a orbit so that we never actually go down. I'll raise it a little bit more to be slightly circular, but it's going to be okay to have it a bit offset. Here, we'll call it there. So, you know, it's a bit it's a bit taller here than there, but that's fine, who cares? Okay, so that's us. We're in orbit around Kerbin. Everything is looking lovely. We have a bunch of fuel left in this stage, and then we have a whole other chunk of fuel in the other stage. We have um, almost 2,700 meters per second worth of delta V, change in velocity available, which is way more than we should need. I'm hoping we actually have enough power generation to run this, I just realized. I think we're gonna be okay, but I didn't actually look at the numbers. Let's zoom out, way out. There we go. So this is the orbits of the various planets. There's the sun, Kerbal. Then we've got Moho over here, which is basically Mercury. Then we've got Eve, which is basically Venus. We've got Kerbin itself, which is basically Earth. And then we've got Duna over there. And of course there's you know even more stuff way out here, uh, which is fine. Jewel, Elu, everything's cool. So we're going to Duna. Now, the way to look at this with Duna is that effectively at this point, even though our spaceship is in orbit around Kerbin, that part of our path, the orbit around Kerbin is almost completely meaningless. What we can think of it instead is we are in orbit around the sun. That's our, that's our situation that we can think about. We're in orbit around the sun and Duna is also in orbit around the sun. So all we're looking to do is raise our orbit from this circle. So that's what we're doing. We're following Kerbin. We're in this orbit, the same orbit as Kerbin around the sun. That's what we're doing right now. We have a subset, but it doesn't matter. And what we want to do is we want to run burn prograde in, in this context so that the orbit, which is currently this blue line for us, raises to meet the red line of Duna. That's all we need to do at this point to intersect Duna in some way. So what we need to do is burn prograde relative to this. Now, of course, if we zoom in, we're actually currently still in orbit around this planet. But if you look, right, if you, to burn prograde, we have to burn upwards from this point of view, right? We're burning sort of straight up. That is the, the direction of prograde. 12 o'clock is prograde. So if we zoom in, what we want to do is we want to sort of exit this orbit here so that it ejects us basically northwards out of this. There's some sweet spots. There's actually some websites that calculate the exact place to burn and different things like that. But basically, as, you lo as long as you do that sort of thing, you're gonna be okay. If we get really lucky, we actually get might get a boost from the moon or Minmus. It might not send us in the ideal direction, but a boost from these would be better than an ideal exit direction. So I think it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Have you ever probed Uranus? I heard um, if you took a bottle of the solar system and shrunk it down to where the sun would be at your head, and I don't know if it's Pluto, I think it's Pluto would be at your feet, then Uranus would be right about where you'd expect it. Anyway, um, so what we had to do is we got to burn prograde relative to Kerbin so that our orbit increases and breaks and sends us out this way. So if we were to burn, I believe around here-ish, and we're going to plan this maneuver, you can see our orbit will grow and grow and grow. And grow and grow and grow. Mm. Oh, hang on. Hello. Does anyone else want a slingshot off the moon? Now we gotta be careful because I think right now we'd actually be smacking into the moon. There we go. If we do something like this though, we'd get a boost. We'd go from this orbit to that orbit, which is a boost. It's not gonna save us much. It's pretty cool though. Do it, gravity assist, and of course, what we can do is when we're at, at, at the moon's periapsis, we can do another burn then, 
to take advantage of the OART effect. Is that what it's called? Um, which is really what we're doing here anyway, uh, to get an even further boost. So we're gonna start with this. I love it, rule of cool. Slingshot within 10K, I agree. What we're gonna do at this point is we can right click on, not right click on the moon, click on the moon, focus view. So, okay, I'm gonna do this maneuver first and then I'll do an adjustment immediately afterwards. It'll just be easier. So we'll tell Smartass to just keep us posted to, uh, facing the maneuver node, which is gonna be fine. And we're gonna fast forward to the next maneuver, which always quick save beforehand. Warp to next maneuver. Excellent. And so it, the estimated burn is about 50 seconds. So about 25 seconds before the node will start our burn. And go. Oberth effect is also known as the manly effect. <laughs> I've met Scott Manley. He's such a great guy in, in person too. Exactly what you would imagine. So we're gonna burn. We don't have a ton of thrust to weight ratio, but pretty good. So this is our, uh, the blue lines are our actual current orbit. It's gonna grow and grow and grow. And eventually intersect with the moon. And I like setting the focus to the moon so I can see our orbit from this point of view. And yeah, ideally what we'd like to do is get as low as possible periapsis to the moon. The closer to the moon we swing by, the more of a boost we'll be able to do. Now you get some boost based on what side of the moon you come near and whatever, but whoop. Stop. There we go. Got to back that up a little bit. So I can right click this to keep it open, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, whoop, that was tricky. The tiniest little burn right now is having this hugest difference. Okay, there we go. We're just gonna just graze the surface of the moon effectively. And now all of a sudden we've got a gravity slingshot already going. Technically, this is gonna slingshot us the wrong way. It's probably okay. Because right now it would be throwing us retrograde, which isn't what we want. It's not ideal. But here's the thing, when we get here, so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna leave it as is. When we get to the periapsis of the moon, a small change there will have a big impact somewhere else and we might be able to adjust it a fair bit. And yeah, we can change the thrust limit for finer tuning, but it's still gonna be too hard to do from over here. How is it? Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna take my engine and limit its thrust basically as low as possible. There you go. So now our engine's just gonna like barely be like breathing at all. I'm gonna turn, well, let's leave it here for a second and I give it one notch of shift. So what I would like still is I would like our, our exit to be up. Okay, that's not going the right way, but if I turn around and go prograde instead, and it, we're burning just the most microscopic amount of fuel you could possibly imagine here. And it's still gonna have a big impact. So we're gonna be coming in quite a bit higher than before, which is fine. Even leaving this way would be okay, but the ideal, yeah, is to leave up. Because that's effectively gonna be giving us a boost um, prograde from Kerbin, which is what we're looking for. Oh, that's pretty good. 
Ability to burn a soft these legs probably the biggest bullshit this game has in store. That's true, because regular engines mostly are just on and off. They don't really have throttles. All right, I'm gonna turn the thrust limiter back on. I'm gonna quick save. And uh, let's do the time warp. Oh, yeah, we can get another magnetometer scan. Uh, I hit B, I don't even know what that does. I meant to hit M. We're gonna transmit the science. Excellent. And fast forward. There we go. So, we're about to enter, we're gonna do a little bit of a loop and come swinging down towards the moon. So then we sort of went above the moon and then we're coming down. Time warp's gonna auto slow us and we can do another scan over here in orbit of the moon. I don't have to turn on the antenna, right? Like it was just, this is just on by default. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Nothing has changed. You gotta check after time warps and things like that. You gotta make sure that nothing has changed too much, but we're gonna be okay. We're gonna do a flyby of the moon. No, well, I suppose we should actually, you know, get to see. Look at this. Flyby of the moon with the earth in the background. Screenshots, screenshots. Oh, how nice is that? Just gorgeous. Yeah, the chatter mod is great. I got a fair number of visual mods too. Yeah, yeah, not Earth. That's still gonna happen. I'm gonna say Earth, I'm gonna say Mars. Woo! All right, big time warps. Now, if we go out now um, and we scroll out, we'll actually be able to get more of an idea of whatever orbit is doing. There you go. So the blue path here is the path of Kerbal, right? Or Kerbin, I should say, Earth. The yellow path is what our orbit's going to be. So by leaving, going, north or to the top of the screen, 12 o'clock, we got a slight boost. It's not terribly meaningful, but it's there. Now, what I could do at this point is I could burn a longer current path to effectively be burning a prograde relative to the sun, which is what we're looking for. But whether we burn now or after we leave Kerbin's sphere of influence makes very little difference. Um, and while it would be slightly more efficient, it would also be slightly trickier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and warp until we leave the sphere of influence. And then we'll do maneuvers relative to the sun. It's gonna be way easier to work with. All right, we are the, gonna be the first Kerbin vessel to leave the sphere of influence of Kerbin in, in this game. And then we'll no longer be orbiting Kerbin at all. We'll be orbiting Corbel the sun. I guess I can go through fairly quickly. It's gonna be okay. And there we go. Okay, we are now in orbit around the sun. I'm very excited. So uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and deploy all our sciences and transmit. Transmit all the science. Awesome. Okay. So our target is Duna. We want to get to Duna. And we're going to do that because by raising our orbit to match Duna and, you know, hoping that we arrive at the yellow line at about the same time as Duna is in the same place. And in theory, if our transfer window calculations uh, from the Kerbal Alarm Clock were vaguely correct, that should just happen without us having to go through too much work. So we're going to be burning prograde. We're adding more energy to our orbit, raising it, and we're raising it opposite where we are, so somewhere over here. And we're looking for this dashed yellow line to break, because if that happens, that means we encounter Duna. Oh, so this is our closest approach right here. Now this would be our closest approach. There. And if we keep going, there it is. We get this purple break in here. Now, because we didn't leave at exactly the right time in exactly the right angle, we're actually having to spend slightly more fuel than we would like right now. Because what we would prefer is at our apoapsis, at our highest point in our orbit, should be the point where we interact, uh, uh, where we intersect Duna. Unfortunately, we didn't time it exactly right, so we're burning. Because ideally, 
our apoapsis would be somewhere around here. It would actually be below Duna, but we'd still be within its sphere of influence. Now we have to sort of er overburn to get there. It's going to be fine. We have plenty of juice. But this is why we brought some extra stuff with us. Now, what thing we can do now? Well, I'll do this maneuver because this is how I like to do it. Now, maybe if I tune some of the angles and things like that, we can actually get the encounter a little bit earlier, a little bit better. In fact, that's very likely to be the case. Let's say I back up on the uh, prograde burn here and we do something like that. And then I add in a little bit of radial or anti-radial. Those are usually not as efficient as just increasing your orbit size by burning prograde or taking away by retrograde. But in this case, it might. So you can see here, I can change the angle a little bit. Now all of a sudden our encounter is happening a little sooner, a little sooner. Oh, slightly missed there. Let's add a little bit more power. Oh. So now we can get an encounter here. I don't know what the previous Delta V was. I think technically this saves a tiny, tiny scooch over what was before, but it doesn't matter. So we're gonna just start with this. It's gonna be fine. We'll actually have to burn through two stages. Our first stage only has 633 meters per second Delta V, um, and we need 837, but that's gonna be fine. Um, estimated burn, 39 minutes. Oh, that's because the last burn we had was at like microscopic uh, thrust limiter and uh, Kerbal doesn't update its burn timer. Uh, automatically until you start another burn. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle. Toggle, there it goes. Uh, this device here, just in case it offsets our center of mass or something like that. It's gonna be fine, we'll point to the node. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and just fast forward to the node. So, oh, quick save first. That didn't take, quick save, there you go. Then warp to here. You know, I'm about to fix that bug. Um, the uh, 1.5 patch of Kerbal, I believe one of the changes that they're doing is exactly that, uh, to improve the burn timers. But there's a, there's a mod just called like improve burn times or something like that, that also helps. There we go, make sure we're focused in the right place. There we go, that's what I wanted. Okay, so I mean, we're not literally at the node or whatever, it's gonna be fine. We're just gonna go to, um, so you're pointing at the maneuver node, you're gonna go to full burn. Yeah, there you go. So it's only a 40 second burn. That's what, that's much more what I expected. We're gonna burn until this stage is out of fuel, then we'll stage and complete the burn. Kerbal Mondays are good. It's whiskey and chocolate! It's whiskey and chocolate! Oh, mid burn! We're burning whiskey. This is how we power our rockets. And stage. And stage. There we go. Woo! It's a little one now. It does burn a lot faster. Okay, we'll stop somewhere around there. We'll check to see the situation. Okay, yeah, we're not quite there, but I like to do the final burns manually and potentially with a fair amount of thrust limiter on here. So I want to focus on Duna. And if we just do a bit more burn. Uh, it may still need another type of adjustment burn here. There we go, closest approach, no, we're fine. Separation, there you go, okay. Now we are officially going to be in encountering the, the Mars. Oh, I never actually verified my inclination. This is working out perfectly though, because I do actually want to come into Mars either far above or far below. Uh, Malantas, thank you very much for your contribution to the Whiskey and Chocolate Fund. I discovered you through your Unity tutorials and have been a significant resource I've used to learn C Sharp slash Unity. Hey, awesome, that's fantastic. Uh, thanks a lot for all your videos. Really enjoying this KSP series and your Rim World series. Thank you very much. I didn't forget the safety lights. We have safety lights. And they're even on and everything. So if I were to burn just slightly more, yeah, we can get this to swing exactly underneath Duna, more or less. There's gonna be some fuzziness to it and that's gonna be okay. We're very far away. We wanna get closer. Now, I believe if we were to do a normal or anti-normal burn right now, I think it would make very little difference. I think we wanna do it further in. Something like that. 
And I think we want to be somewhere between 100K and 500K above Duna for the maximum surface scanning stats. Yeah, I'm going into the polar orbit because of our surface scanner from the uh, the D-Magic mod. Otherwise, um, well, otherwise, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I'm just trying to enter a regular orbit, I don't think it matters whether I'm like polar or equatorial or retrograde or prograde orbits. I don't think it matters. I think it only matters if you're actually trying to land on the surface because then you want to be um, orbiting the, the planet or whatever in the same direction that it rotates so that you don't have to slow down as much for the landing. I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure for just regular orbit, it doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, quick save before you adjust anything. There's that too. I'm actually gonna make a hard save here in case I accidentally hit a button while we time warp because we've got a long, long way to go. Um, and really, okay, yeah. So if we do a normal run now, I know this is working okay. Good. Normal burn. Bring it up, 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 up. Now we're so far away. Like we're making massive changes in moments. I'm still running at like what 10% burn, and this is one notch of shift. Oh, this would actually get us a flyby of Ike, or I like to say Ike usually. One of the moons? Why not? Can we bring this periapsis as low as possible so we can do a gravity, like, anti-slingshot around Ike? That tons of fuel. Now, this could save us more. Plus, gives us an extra scan. And more importantly, it's super awesome. If I click you and focus on you, it's still going to be important that we're mostly polar here. Because then when we leave... Uh, I mean, we can make an adjustment once we enter here. Whoop! My god, we need to, like, derate the engine even more. 15% with one tack, a tick of shift, and it was still insanely fast. Okay. We're, we're gonna basically, like, scratch... We're gonna leave a mark on the planet at this point. Not really, we're still 15 kilometers above, but... We're gonna see how this goes. You're going so fast at Ike. Uh, be sure it doesn't just eject. I mean, it should be okay. Regardless, we're gonna have to make some like some effective retrograde burns at some point, but I think this will make it easier. We'll probably it'll be easy to get ourselves into a massive orbit around Duna, and then we can make more adjustments. Yeah, skid marks on Ike, exactly. Okay, uh, let's do another hard save here because we're gonna do big time warps, and it's easy for something to go weirdly wrong. Um, just warp to here first. 180 days into the future. Toss a flag at Ike like a javelin. <laughs> Hope he doesn't have an atmosphere. Ike doesn't. I think I don't think so. I think it's totally barren. Duna does, but it's um, it's not as high as um, as Kerbin. Kerbin's atmosphere starts at 70k. Duna's what 50k? Something like that. It's not gonna matter because we're not gonna get that close to Duna. I mean, hell, if Ike does have an atmosphere, it's still not going to be that dense, so we'd be able to just go right through it. Duna starts at 60? Okay. And Duna's is also very thin, yeah. You can... Oh, that's kind of cool, because you've got the signal back home showing you there. This is us here. This is where we are. And you can see, like, there's Duna, there's us, and we're going to meet over here. We're slowly approaching the same place. We're ahead right now. Oh, this is my, my warp spot. Yeah, that's fine. Going by like two days a second. But yeah, Duna's atmosphere is thin, but you can use parachutes to bring you there. Okay, our signal is dropping a little bit. It's possible that when Kerbin and Duna are at opposite sides of the sun, we might have a little bit of signal range problems. But overall, we're okay. We still have control. That's the important thing. The other thing we can do is we can spend a bunch of money. Oof, this is getting rough. We can spend a bunch of money to upgrade the tracking station on Kerbin. That will that will close this off. 
And we actually might have to do that. Because if suddenly we don't have the ability to control our vessel. I don't know if we stop, start to lose control, like where the, the cutoff is. Oh yeah, that's true. The, the the relays do add up. We could have done that, but I mean, in practice, an extra like multiple satellite or multiple um, dishes would have been pretty harsh. Let's um, let's do another save before we scene change. Let's go to the space center and check a few things. Can't control it. Will it slingshot off? Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> I have not played Dominions 5. It is, I have dabbled with the Dominions before. But we've had this problem happen before. It's like the KSC is underneath the water for some reason. It's probably because of all my mods or something. You can still use the button, so it's okay. But I think if we go into the AB and go back out, it's gonna be fine. Build a stationary network relay. Now that's an interesting idea. Yeah, global warming. A lot happened in the uh, year and a half since we launched this probe. What is the transmission strength of the tracking station right now? It's 50 G. We could upgrade it. Oh, we have just enough money to do it. Because I say, is if we built a probe that's got more than 50 G of relay power. But yeah, we'll just we'll just upgrade this. It'll take a lot of money. We'll run a couple of contracts. It's gonna be fine. Um, you know, we can take out some more advances and things. It's going to be A-OK. -okay. So now our tracking station has way bigger antennas. We even get HBO now. Or we could. We have to, we, it costs extra. Uh, the PSS Smart Future is currently orbiting the sun. We want to fly this. I don't think we have contracts for Duna. Hi. So, you are still on a way to rendezvous, which is fine. And I like to do these, like, warps to get closer and closer. It just lets you double check that there's no weird problems. Oh, yeah, it's not time warpy quite as fast as I would like. Let's go. See, now we're slightly over Duna. The thing is, the further away you are from the thing you're orbiting, the longer it takes you to orbit. So by being above Duna, we're giving it a chance to catch up. But again, ideally, we would have liked to time everything that we didn't have to do that. But it got to the point where, like, it's not making much of a difference. If we were a little bit more concerned about, you know, time for, like, life support or something, that might be a thing. And, whoa. Okay. Here we come. Is the mod for random breakdowns? I do have the mod for random breakdowns installed. And yeah, we have full signal strength now. Well, 78%. And that's still like, we're not on the opposite side of the sun from, from Kerbin, but it's gonna be, that's gonna be fine. Okay, we are now in the sphere of influence of Duna. We've got some science we can do, which we will do if I can... Where's the button for my science mod? Oh! No, still, where's the button for my science mod? Did it break? Oh, you can't do it from the map screen. There it is. Hello. Um, deploy everything. And transmit. And transmit. And transmit some more. Okay. I mean, we look like a freaking probe, you know? We look like Voyager, don't we? It feels like we do. Okay. So now, the question is, what kind of magic can we do? Uh, no, I don't want to add a maneuver. I want to... Click on Ike. I like Ike. What kind of magic when we, can we do when we're at the Ikean periapsis to make awesome things happen? 
So the blue line is us now, the yellow line is where we're going to be when we encounter Ike, and the purple line is going to be where we're going to be after we leave Ike. So, what we probably want to do is burn a retrograde around Ike. Oh, there we go. So if we do, yeah, that's quite expensive. I'm not sure how much we're going to win here. We'll see. Actually, that's pretty good. That's where we want a periapsis. So if we do this retrograde burn relative to Ikey, that will put us, after we leave Ikey, we will find ourselves in orbit around Duna with a periapsis of 349 um, kilometers, which is right in the sweet spot for our surface scanner, which is great. I mean, we might want to do one low pass at a low orbit, we'll, we'll leave it there. Now, our apoapsis will still be a little bit high, but then we can do a retrograde burn to fix that. And we're going to be in um, roughly polar orbit around Duna, which is where we're looking for. Seems okay. Is that what you're thrust rating down? I mean... Yeah, we want to go and bring that up. So we don't know what our burn time is going to be, except that we can actually eyeball it from here. Uh, um, Mechjev says our total burn time in our engine stage is 22 seconds, and that's with 100 meters per second. So if we're burning a little over half of that, we're probably going to need something like a 12 second burn. Those lights don't look like they're on. They were on. They, they look, still look like they're on. There we go. Just toggle them again. Maybe when we switched vehicles, they didn't come back on. That's possible. All right, so... We're going to go ahead and uh, let time run. I'm just going to fast forward to here for now. It's going to take us two days. Can you make them spin? Yeah, I don't know why they don't spin. The stick is the boom for one of our science experiments from the D Magic Science mod. It's okay, just let me fast forward again, thank you. The little auto fast forward function is a little bit wonky. Done, okay. We are now in the sphere of influence of Ike. Switch means we can get our science experiments again. Temperature scan, magnetometer scan, atmospheric pressure scan, and transmit that back. So we're getting more and more and more and more science. We're also gonna be able to do a low pass of science um, at Ike, because we're gonna come real close. We're gonna set uh, ourselves to face the maneuver node ahead of time, which is basically gonna be a retrograde burn relative to Ike, which as a side effect, just because of how things will work out, will also effectively retrograde us a certain amount um, relative to Duna. So that's gonna be convenient. Safety lights without spin are just orange lights. It's true. It's too bad they don't spin. I mean, they don't even have to spin the light effect, just spin the texture for it or something. Although you could spin the light effects with, like, light cookies and things, I think. I don't know. All right. Quick save. Can I not click on the path over here and say warp 2? Seem weird. Warp the next maneuver. Okay. I can do it that way. Oh, wait. Seriously? I think this, oh my God. There's no way for me to stop the rotation. So it almost feels like it should be rotating from start. Cause it's clockwise, counterclockwise. There's not a counterclockwise. It's not spelled right. Oh my God, they spin. They spin. I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, all right, fast forward. Chuka, 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 chuka. Uh, we're in the dark side of things right now. Electric charge is still good. It's being spent. Um, I'm going to want to deploy the science, um, but not transmit it right now. I'm going to just keep all the experiments. I don't want to transmit it while we don't have sunlight, which is the situation right now because we are currently being eclipsed by, by Ike here. Hey, it's a big potato shaped thing. Duna here only has one moon though, right? As opposed to Mars, which has two. 
Deimos and Phobos, the two horses of, of Ares, or Mars, I guess. <gasps> no signal. Because um, line of sight is being blocked. That's It's not the end of the world. First of all, I feel like we can turn thrust fully on or off with the vanilla Kerbal. Still. And indeed that is true. I don't think we can steer it. Also, we're not getting Delta V updates. Wait, what? Okay. This is fine. Yeah, I can't do any throttle manipulation other than fully on or fully off. I'm gonna leave it there as a periapsis. Slightly too high, but honestly, we can do a tiny little retrograde burn at the apoapsis. I'm gonna do that because it's just gonna be way safer. Oh, I can't even delete the control node. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't wanna I don't wanna mess with this. Houston, be advised we're doing a blind burn. So okay, we have spinning lights. Our safety lights are in full engage mode. Everything is safe. Because we have safety lights on. Okay, let's um let's do the time warp again. So there's there's home. There we go, we got a signal again. Whoo! And we have sunlight, we have full power. I'm still gonna delete this node, it's gonna be fine. Um and our experiments. Now if I just tell you here. Transmit data? Does it transmit all the... Okay, it does. More science! Without safety lights, this would have been an unmitigated disaster. You're absolutely right. The only reason this is going okay is because of safety lights. Alright. So that's all been transmitted, so I think... Yeah, these could all be run again. <sighs> okay. So yeah, I'm not going to make any more maneuvers. We're going to go ahead and time warp until we leave the sphere of influence of Ike. Thump, thump, thump. Good. Okay. So now we are in orbit around Duna. Now, at some point, Ike might come close enough to capture us again. That would be very awkward, but we're going to be okay before that. So we have two hours until we hit the apoapsis over here. So what we're going to do at the apoapsis is we're going to burn retrograde to lower our periapsis. Cool? Cool. Right? We're going to take energy out of our orbit make the circle a little smaller, and you always affect the opposite end of your orbit when you're doing this, so it's going to result in bringing the periapsis down lower, and it just has to be lower than 500k, I think, for our scanner. I think we, we did check that last time, and that was fine. So we'll just go, I'm just doing it very lightly here, one tick a shift, you can see the numbers just drop, 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 here, we'll do something like that. I mean, in a sense, the lower I do the periapsis, the easier it will be to bring down the apoapsis, but I think... I don't know if there's a sweet spot. Yeah, we don't have much Delta V remaining. We don't need it. Right, if I were to go and add a maneuver here and burn retrograde to bring down the apoapsis to below 500k. Done. It only needs 185 meters per second. That's basically all we need for circularization. However, what I would like to do very much is I would like to break, improve our inclination around Mars, because we're at about 85 degrees inclination off the North Pole, which might be perfectly sufficient, actually, to get 100% coverage. But it would be a little easier. It would be better if we were at zero inclination. Now, how do we get the ascending and descending nodes? There's a trick when you're not targeting something. It's really annoying. Well. Actually, Ike probably has a 0% inclination. I'm betting. So we can use that knowledge to just burn at one of the ascending and descending points over here. Basically, the point at which you cross the equator is where you want to do the burn to sort of angle, to shift the angle like this. And so I would like to do that so that we can um, just be like right over the North Pole. I don't think we need it, but what the hell, right? Um, any guesses if we're burning pro-normal or anti-normal? This is going ascending here. I think we burn anti-normal at the ascending node. Or vice versa. 
Oh, I guess it's going to be vice versa because we're going the other way. I might be wrong, but I think it's going to be this. I do have scan sat for mapping. Whoa! Okay, I should just warp to the descending node at this point. Is there a way to calculate the relationship between number of safety lights and how safe a mission is? Every safety light ensures 100% safety. So three safety lights, 300% safe. <laughs> the problem is that, that everything else in Kerbal has a negative modifier because of the way it is. Now we can't burn too much Delta V here. Inclination, so we want to bring that up. If I give it a little shift, that number is going down. So I guessed incorrectly. So I want to burn the other way around and bring the number up. And remember, we have to save about 180 Delta V, but it's going to be fine. Even this tiny little burn, it's going up very fast. Burn a little faster. I'm going to bring this as close to 90%, 90 degrees as possible. Whoop. Slightly over. It's fine. Basically, we're passing right over the North Pole, and that's going to be A-OK. -okay. All right. So now what I want to do at the periapsis, I want to burn retrograde to bring down the apoapsis so that both ends of this are under 500K, which will be the perfect height for our um, surface scanner. Unless... We should probably get low marsh, low duna um, science, right? What if I bring, now I don't know, um, uh, KSB wiki science. I don't know the breakpoint for low to high orbit on duna, but you can find out. Duna, 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 duna is the atmosphere space 140 kilometers what if actually at the apoapsis i bring down the periapsis to below 140k that means at some point in our orbit we'll hit low martian or low dune in orbit so we get more science i think we want to do that if you air break a little you get some in atmosphere science as well that's true but i'm not confident in things to do that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to warp up again to the apoapsis. So it's more efficient to far out burn than burn back. Yeah, that's one of the cool things. For the normal or anti-normal burns, it's always more efficient, although there's a limit at, at, one point, at a certain point. It just doesn't really improve very much. Um, it's always better if you're going to do a normal anti-normal burn. Make your orbit as big as possible. Burn normal or anti-normal and then shrink your orbit again, you'll always save more. I, I mean, we discussed it last time. It's a limit. I don't remember if it's like 43% or 67% or something like that. Um, at one point, you're not really gaining anything more. It'll never hurt you, but you know you won't longer gain anything. But it's really funny. And this is true in real life. Like, this is just the thing. It's a side effect of science. Okay. Uh, orbital retrograde, yes. Periapsis, we're going to bring it below 140. And, whoa. There you go, like that. Perfect. Then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna warp to the periapsis and bring down the apoapsis below 500. Partially so that we don't accidentally smack into Ike. See, we're at the low side now, which is nice. We'll deploy everything, transmit everything. And time to periapsis, we're nearly there. We'll just fast forward a little bit more for slightly more efficient burn. Not that it matters, we have tons. We don't have tons of Delta B. We actually pack basically just the right amount. All right, burn retro to bring down our apoapsis. Seven hundred, six hundred, five hundred, and there. Just below five hundred. Boom! So our scan sat will be very happy here could go fully circular at this point just for style points but there we go we have 205 meters per second delta v left over <laughs> we didn't have a lot of excess we're going to start our surface scans here altimetry sensor so all it's going to do is like tell us the height of the of the martian terrain but at some point we will learn that and it's just cool and if ever we get a mission to like transmit science from duna we can just do it wow cool rock no overkill i know right like this this was much less overkill than I thought we were packing. It's probable some of our slingshot moves weren't actually efficient or something, but it's possible.
but we got bonus science, right? The Ike, and actually that's the thing. Uh, it would have been much more efficient for instead of doing, instead of coming in and doing the flyby Ike, it would have been much more efficient if we'd come in super low on on Duna, like just over the Duna atmosphere, like so 61k or something like that would have been the best. But yeah, I think I think the slingshots cost us a ton because especially the. Um, I mean, maybe this one. I don't know. This one, yeah, yeah. This one here costs us a lot, and probably the one on on for the moon wasn't very good either. But hey, there we are. Because mm -hmm. you only slingshot if you come at it from the correct side. <laughs> but that's okay. Revert immediately. Can you do a geostationary relay of Kerbin? Um, I mean, you can. I don't know if there's an advantage to being geostationary, though. Practically close enough to see the sandworms. <laughs> are we are we back and it's just... Oh, yeah, it's just glitching again. Okay, hang on. Is there a burning retrograde to Duna at Ike's orbital radius? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Makes sense. But it's not. it wasn't just fun, Captain Penguin. We got all the Ike science. And... The angle, I mean, I guess the ideal would have been get close to Duna, burn retrograde until we happen to have an encounter with Ike, although we had no way of guaranteeing that was going to happen. Well, we could have just gotten to Duna orbit and then waited for it to happen, which is hard, though, because we were in polar orbit and very hard to get an encounter. So, yeah, super fuel, like, we used a lot more fuel than we needed to just for Duna, but we got so much more science. So let's find out how much science we've got. Let's spend this bad boy. So we're sitting at about 94, 96 science, something like that. We had 756. We had something like 650 science from that. Without sacrificing a single Kerbal, which is crazy. What the hell? Um, we also got some money. Where do we get money from? Did some other contracts complete? Okay, stage destroyed. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Space around Kerbin. Okay, some stage got recovered. Oh, we completed a bunch of milestones, which give us money as well. Yeah. Guys, we're not broke. Woohoo! All right. Uh, yeah, so contracts, we have five available. We got some rescues. Position satellite in equatorial orbit of Kerbin. More rescues if you want people. Test some things. Actually, we'll take the satellite mission. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to cancel these rescues and some of these tests. Position satellite in a specific orbit of Duna. <laughs> yeah. We might we might do some more of those. Uh, temperature surveys with Duna. On the ground? Oh, in specific areas. No, those, that's poop. Oh, Fox's Star Relay. They want us to adjust the orbit of it for our contract. I think that thing's got tons of fuel. So we could certainly consider doing that. Or we'll accept it. Let's take a look real quick at the Fox Star Relay. Yeah, no, rescues are great because they pay you and get a Kerbal, but um, we have a, an ability to generate Kerbals from names in Twitch chat, so we mostly want to use that. Uh, oh yeah, so just a slight adjustment is all they want. Oh, that's true. You can always preview the orbit change before accepting the contract as well. Usually they're fairly reasonable. Not all in the cost effective or feasible. True. Usually you have pretty good luck. So, we're currently in the, the teal orbit, and we need to be in the darker orbit. Um, we are going the right way around, right? You don't actually get the markers. Yeah, so this island's where we are. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very tiny change. Oh, we have no Delta V. We have zero fuel. So we actually can't do this contract at all. It's whiskey and chocolate. It's whiskey and chocolate, though. Who dat? How does the ratio between whiskey and chocolate in the whiskey and chocolate fund affect the percentage of safety per safety light? Uh, I, I want to enter math joke here, but I really don't know. Time for an overly complicated refueling mission, which could be really entertaining, but yeah. Uh, space Center.
If you can send a grabbing arm to refuel the sap, it's probably not very cost effective. It would be super fun. I see unlimited propellant. That's true, we could just cheat. <laughs> Cause you just turn on unlimited fuel. Of course, if you wanted to just cheat, you could go to the uh, to over here and uh, we could look at our contracts and uh, the uh, the active ones and be like, um, no, we, we totally completed this contract. I don't know what you're talking about, guys. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, pff, 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 exactly. Anyway, uh, moving on. <laughs> um, what do we want to do next? I mean, we only have 20, 40 minutes left in uh, this day's stream to do another one. Science data from Space Around Ike. Damn it! Why are you telling me this now? Well, we've got tons of science. Um, uh, so we can unlock a ton more stuff. In fact, we'll probably be able to unlock everything until we upgrade our science center here. Not literally everything. And what, the flight controls? Yeah, we could have unlocked a bunch of mech jib helpers, but that's okay. We don't have fuel lines yet. But maybe we do send a, a mission to Minmus. Now, the reason we didn't last time is because the mission we planned was a pilot plus scientist, and the scientist was there so we could reset our material bay. And then it turned out that it was going to be too cramped and our Kerbals were going to be too miserable, so we can't do that. So let's say we send a single Kerbal. So uh, Fallen God Zero over here. Let's say we want to send him to space. If we take a look at our life support. Habitation, seven days. That's not enough time to get the Minmus. So basically after seven days, uh, Fallen God Zero would just flip out from the not having enough room. Man, this, this life support mod is making life a lot harder for us. Which, I mean, is the point, but... It's EV Adams. Um, is that under payload? Like, where do we get... There's ways other than pods to fit extra people, isn't there? I thought. Like, not a crew capacity one, but... Under the cogs? Yeah, the cabin crew here. That's the sort of thing I'm looking at. I mean, which is possible. I mean, now you should have lots of space. Yeah, 22 days. Only seven days if we filled it with people. There's gotta be... Let's see. I'm betting the life support mod adds... Like, an inflatable... Um, housing space. So when you get into space, you expand it so that you have more hab space. I'm curious about these airbags. Be a resource container for life support stuff. And maybe, um... Maybe under the life support category? That's some. Hmm. Put probe core in a capsule can steer it even with freaked out Kerbal. saying that long. This mod is so different than the other life support mod in that they care about space. Maybe too aggressively, I don't know. We probably, we may just have to wait until we get the, um, the bigger modules. Where's the space info on this?
It's the same amount of space. So is this one? Yeah, multiple pods, one curve alone. It feels stupid though. Doesn't that feel really stupid to anyone else? storage. It's inflatable. But yeah, it's just for resource storage. Habitation? Nothing. This got, there must be something, and I'm just missing it because I haven't used this life support mod before. There must be something. Why not start the space station? Because we don't have the, um, the the core science module, which is really the base of it. If I look at something like this, and the crew cabin, what trade is it that I can find? I guess it's crew capacity. Yeah, so I don't think there's anything else that we've got right now that gives us extra Kerbal space. It's probably something later in the tech tree. Okay. Well, how do we get there then? Um, we need some money. Like, we, we, we do have a couple, or one or two, I don't know, uh, extra levels, things in the science center we could unlock now if we had more science. But the big thing is we don't have enough money to upgrade the center so that we can reach more things. So we need to complete some contracts, and we need to get some extra science. I suppose we can do some of these uh, touristy ones. Orbit, suborbit, orbit, suborbit, orbit, suborbit. Can we bring for oh it's it's grabbing these from Chet too! J Masters, 99 Stars, Kuno, and Azoth Azathoth. Um these guys want to go into orbit and come home. Can we get four people, let's say five with a pilot, because we're gonna be reasonable here, into orbit and back. In before we just murder five Kerbals right now. Let's do it. It's fine. Okay, that's a lot of stuff to bring home without exploding. That's a lot of people to bring home without exploding. We can't build a space plane, we don't have the means for that. Maybe some sort of space re-entry? I don't know, man. All right, we could do this. Oh, Jesus Christ. Can external seat survive re-entry? Err. We don't want to cover the windows. A bunch of those. We'll want some drogues as well. Uh, maybe I can just put a drogue in the front. Oh. Well, I'm confused. Yeah, so that's the regular parachute. So there's a drogue, but it's huge. All right, that's fine. We'll just four up this way. Second like the landing sideways. Yeah, I thought about, I mean, we could do that. We could, um, there's a bunch of things we could do to help deploy these. We could have it land on the bottom that way by just putting all the parachutes on the top. Unless designing it sort of space plane style. 
right? Um, we go to double symmetry and then we shift R to go into mirror symmetry instead of radial. And we do something like that. We might still want the drogues to come out like on one end like this though. And I still think, I think that might be the idea. But I'm really worried about the heat shield. And I'm wondering like, do we build an oversized heat shield? But then how do we how do we get that to work with everything else? Maybe though. Do we have 2.5 meter parts? So there's a whole 1.85 meter category of stuff that I'm not used to dealing with. I don't know if we have a like a coupling for that size. Maybe. The problem is on launch it becomes like, wow, that's a lot of resistance. But fairing, yeah. Select. That's weird. Is that like lagged as I'm trying to click on things over here? Okay. Do we have engines that fit though? I mean, it's a poodle, but it's the wrong size. Like that's the thing. This, I don't think we can work with this this size of stuff. And yeah, we will need like some crazy reaction wheelage to make sure that it stays pointing the right way on re-entry. Oh, we probably don't have... Oh, we might have larger fairings now. Um, that's under what? Payload? Yeah, we do. Okay. We might be able to work with the... Um, the 2.5 meter sizing. I could put this just higher, but no, this is fine. It's whiskey and chocolate. There we go. Is it impossible to use wings for re-entry? It absolutely is. Um, the problem is maybe if you have infernal robotics, which I've never used before, but they are technically installed. Um, I'm wondering if we could have wings that just deploy outwards. We might even want to use some air brakes, actually. Uh, oh, it's Hobo Serenity! Hey! Serenity, uh, I don't know if you remember, last time you were wondering what the weird thingy on the side of the spherical capsule was. It's a decoupler that comes with the capsule. Yeah, I did eventually notice that. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I know there's some clipping here. Fins on the capsule to stabilize it. Mm, I don't know. I suppose if we do want to get rid of the clipping, though. Just move this down a little. There you go. <laughs> that one ladder bit still clips through. But that's okay. Um, I might throw an extra freaking tapered fairing. Oh, neat. Um, I think I'll throw some batteries on there, actually. And maybe a nose cone or an extra parachute or something of that nature. I'm not sure. That is... Yeah, that. Probably just a nose cone. I think we have a lot of... Um, I'm not sure. Let's say, well, we have plenty of uh, braking, but I'm actually not certain about that. Brakes are for chumps. Oh, I missed your the whiskey and chocolate donation from Captain Penguin. Oh, oh, sorry, it didn't pop up because yeah, uh, Apollo solved this. Build a CSM with a hab space and life support, then a small lem lander for Minmus and Moon. 
It's really rocket science. Oh wait, it's hardly rocket science. And yeah, that's true. Like we could have that. We could do an Apollo style mission. It tends to be so much more work, but it's entirely possible. Uh, there are two parts in the life support tab, which looks like copula domes. Uh, I'm pretty sure they had, yes, uh, we did, um, did see that and these. It does add some more for sure. Cause it looks like it's just everything that has a crew capacity just gives you credit for it. But yeah, we're, we're gonna run this, maybe. We're gonna abreast. Um, Rocco Max, I think that's gonna be too big for our orbital phase. Okay, I need these to be like, I guess you're gonna like 2.5 meters as a search. There we go. Something like that. Poodle. Oops. Thought that was the separator, but no. Oh, hold on. That's got way more efficiency than the poodle. It's heavier. But no. Uh, anyway, um, we'll just throw a quad stacker on there or something. Well, I don't know if we need the quad. We will see. If I go and clear this and then grab, say, swivel engines, what kind of stuff are we looking at here? Actually, this would fly. This has 4,700 meters delta V, which is more than enough for orbit. Uh, the surface level thrust isn't super huge with these, but it's pretty good. That small dome has a multiplier of 0.5, so it gives you 50% more time. Oh, interesting. This can make it. We might want to, just, just for the extra oomph, we might consider. Just a, just a few SRBs, just, just a little bit. Uh, turn off radial symmetry. That's quad up. Just like even just fleas or something. I don't know. Maybe hammers. They just look less ridiculous. There you go. It's a pretty nice aggro start. Put some nose cones on there. A little bit of that. We need to name this bad boy. Uh, I like the Mighty Knight. So the Petra Space Center Mighty Knight. We've got 5k delta V. We shouldn't need more fuel. Um, this should be a lot of gimbling. I'll probably throw on some of our winglets here. Tourist trap. Shit, you're right. The tourist trap. That's what we're going to call this bad boy. One safety light per Kerbal. Now, nice. <laughs> um, just in case something really weird happens, I'm gonna throw on just a, just some little flat solar panels on there. Done. 
Tourists don't deserve safety light. Do a quick space plane, save on cost. The thing's pretty expensive. 45k, the mission's gonna pay us way more than that, though. I love it! We're going! We're going, you guys. Lights everything, does that. Stages this way. I suppose we could even merge that up. Um, let's see if we can recover. Oh, what am I looking for? Right here. Uh, if we can recover this bit. So that's gonna get put in with this stage here. And get told to do something like that. Great looking rocket. Do you have the correct crew? Let's see. No, we probably didn't put the tourists in there. So, Fallen God Zero is gonna be our pilot. And then we're gonna have J Masters, 99 Stars, Kuno no Oni, and Azathos as our um, victims. Da, 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 da. Need landing gear. I actually had meant to put, when, we, when I thought I was gonna land butt first, I thought about putting landing gear, but we're gonna land sort of on our belly. Might roll a little bit. I think it's gonna be fine. Do you pack snacks? We got some peanuts. It's gonna be fine. I mean, you know, we have killed most of the Kerbals we've sent to space. But I'm sure the start of a tourist industry is going to be perfectly okay for us. Okay. SES is turned on. Throttle is set to full. We'll move the smart ass window so we can see everyone's reactions. Uh, J Masters, I don't know if you're in chat right now, but that is the greatest stash going on there, bro. We better land in water. Eh, maybe. What could possibly go wrong? Let's go. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Look at that wobble! <laughs> oh shit, right from the start. Uh, wow. Probably because the engines didn't all like quite simultaneously. But uh, we're okay now. All right, let's start our gravity roll. Woohoo! <laughs> that was fine. Okay. Pushing the prograde. Pushing the prograde. SRBs are about to go. And stage. We didn't put parachutes on them. Maybe we could have. But they're dirt cheap. We probably just bombed the, uh, the space center. That's okay. All right. So we're at 6K. The roll is coming fairly slowly. We definitely don't want to go this too high on this one. So we just want to go like barely into space. Look at this face. Oh, he's happy. I thought he was like in shop, he's like, oh, this is great! I'm so happy right now! Okay, definitely late on the other uh, gravity turn. But I wanna make sure we don't, you know, flip out. This is a great looking rocket, man. This looks like something out of like, you know, cartoons, like Tintin goes to the moon kind of thing. It's risky and It's risky and chocolate, I can't read it right now, I'm sorry. All right, time to apoapsis is climbing fairly quickly. Apoapsis is climbing, 22K. We can, yeah, be outside the prograde marker at this point, it's fine, the atmosphere's thin enough. Uh, and we have a lot of control authority. Let's bring us back a little bit more easterly. We're getting a little floaty, but I think we're okay. Good, 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 good. And Apoaps is at 60k. We're at 35k. We can go flatter and flatter and flatter here. 68k. Anything over 70 is fine. I'll, def I'll kill it when we get a little higher. Pushing it mostly sideways now is mostly what we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stage and then stop the engine. 90k. It looks a little bit wonky here, but it, it, I mean, this is functional. Shit. This is a great looking ship. I actually really love it. Hey, it's the moon. One day, tourism to the moon. Looks like a spark plug? You're right, it does. I like how everything's staged at once. Like, the ship just looked like it exploded. It. The fairing, the stage, the everything. And we are in space. So technically, and we got a little pop-up over here, um, we're completing steps of things for like people who are happy becoming suborbital. Excellent. 
Now, we have to enter orbit. We are one and a half minutes to Apoapsis, which is gonna be fine. We're going to be burning prograde when we get there. It shouldn't be a very long burn, I think. We can probably just eyeball it. I mean, we only have some tourists on board. Why would we go and do anything but eyeball stuff? It's gonna be okay. We could switch and watch the other half land. That's true. That's, that's our other half right there. But it's it's suborbital, so it's actually gonna go. Well, yeah, no, because we launched we dropped it a little earlier. Not much earlier though. It was already going to space. Yeah, I don't know. It might just burn up. Depends on exactly how it sim uh, simulates things. Okay, let's do a little quick save here. Fast forward just a scooch. And whoa, we're about 20 seconds to Apoapsis. I'm gonna do a little test burn. I'm expecting time to Apoapsis to grow. Oh, it's not, it's shrinking slightly. Okay, hopefully we did the burn early enough. We definitely didn't do it too early. I think we're gonna be fine. It's whiskey and chocolate. Oh my god, it's more whiskey and chocolate. I wasn't able to check the last one yet. So, we're trying to go orbital. Time to apoapsis. It is taking longer than the second for each second for the time to apoapsis to go, I'm pretty sure. Which is kind of a good sign. And we might reach, it looks to me like it's slowing. And slowing, it'll probably stop and then start to grow. So I think we did start slightly sooner than we needed to, which is perfectly fine by me. And yeah, that's slowing. That's good. Okay. We're definitely going to be able to be full orbital. No problem. I wasn't concerned about the delta V. I was a little bit concerned about our thrust to weight ratio. Like the burn might have been too slow. Then we had to do weird things with like a radial burn and stuff. No one wants that. Periapsis is now positive. We need to bring it over 70. And done. Okay. The easy part is over. Or rather, no, this was the hard part. Getting to orbit is a pit, you know, you gotta monitor things and everything like that. The part where we have to cross our fingers and pray to the god of Kerbals, I don't know, the Kraken god or something, is gonna be the re-entry. <laughs> uh, so they paid to get into orbit. Now ask them how much they'll pay to get the back safely. <laughs> <laughs> I like your business sense. Uh, of course, they'll just point out to the pilot, like, well, if you can't get back unless we get back. And he'll be like, oh, right. We got uh, Damon and Jin. Thank you very much for that. Hey, a little something from the East Coast towards the Chocolate and Whiskey Thon. Thank you very much, Damon. And uh, Bear Country also contributed. Hey, Quill, first time catching your stream, but thanks to the Yub Tubs so I can watch all your great videos there. By the way, what you take to space if it was whiskey or chocolate? Probably the chocolate, because I'm afraid that the whiskey might contribute to a certain sense of seasickness or something like that. Um, and that might be a bad thing. <laughs> it's okay, we can get the pilots. That's true. Okay, so it's time to come home. Um, I don't know if, what kind of territory might be better to land on. We do have an ocean coming up, so in my opinion, this is a great time for us to go to a retrograde... Mer well, it's not going to be here. It's going to be somewhere else, but it's fine. Or we could wait to be on the sunny side. You know what? We're gonna wait till the sunny side. It'll be a little easier to judge some things. Plus our solar panels. I mean, which are not gonna matter once we detach the stage, but that's gonna be okay. Plus we gotta give people a, the view of the sunrise, right? We got lots of Delta V, so it doesn't matter where we do the burn. We gotta give people that one sunrise experience. I think it's coming up. Things are getting lighter here. Ah, oh, gorgeous. All right, retrograde. They're so happy. They are. Look at these people. Oh my God, they're so happy. All right, go for burn. So we're gonna drop a periapsis, something like that. Yeah, normally I aim for higher, but that's usually on like a lunar return or something like that. That's gonna be fine. And I think there's no reason why I can't just drop this thing at this point. Clearly don't know what's coming. Yeah. All right, let's do a, just for no reason, we're gonna do a hard quick save. I don't, I don't know why we would do that. Um, yeah. We're gonna drop that. We have our oversized heat shield. This actually looks really cool. Okay. Kind of sci-fi-ness to it. Uh, we'll turn this off to save power momentarily. Actually, we don't even need this, because we're going to do surface retrograde is what we're going to be doing with our SAS. And our pilot can handle that, I believe. 
So much fuel to burn off orbital speed. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we did a combination of retrograde plus radial, we actually could have done a little bit more of a burn off. That's true. Um, so you're going to hold surface retrograde. So this is going to keep your butt facing into the wind. And her butt is very large. I like big butts. I cannot lie. You are the most can't deny. Quill, the god of Kerbal, first of his name, builder of Petra, bringer of chocolate, may his whiskey glass never empty. I love it. I love it. It's so good. I'm hoping we actually did satisfy all the contract requirements, but I'm sure we did. So I'm still on the uh, the physics warp right now. Power is good. Ablator is start slightly starting to burn. I think it has the same ablator charge as the smaller one, but it just makes sure that like covers everything, and it might actually break us a little bit more. You know, this is our this is our air break. All right, there we go. We're gonna turn off the time warp for now. Just verify that everything is groovy. Using a little electric charge just for some life support, plus just holding our retrograde. Always worthwhile to read the contract before you detach the engines. Eh, what could possibly go wrong? Things are looking fine right now. Get a, a not EVA. <laughs> Let's take a look. There you go. We're in the seat here. Look out there. We got someone right behind us as well. Oh, look how great that looks. Space tourism. All right. A little bit of hotness. Very good. Mm -hmm. So, just double checking. These are indeed the drogue shoots. So, drogue shoots are smaller and built to handle higher velocities. So, they can slow you down from very high speeds to moderately high speeds. And then you have your regular shoots. Just to make sure, this is a fairly heavy load. I'm a little worried that our four regular shoots won't quite cut it. Hey! That's okay. Without the safety lights, I fear for you. Yeah, that's right, that's why everything went great so far, because we had the safety lights. Now we don't have it anymore. So, I'm starting to get a little concerned. Did we actually pack enough shoots? I don't know. And yeah, the um, I just re remembered the impact resistance on these uh, crew compartments is not very high. We might want to put a little landing gear or, or just a, like a little strut or something like that to cap the impact. Heat shield is working. Yeah, the heat shield's fine, man. And ah, the moon over there. We launch towards the moon and we come back with the moon behind us. Stage of tourists. <laughs> I just hit the EVA button for a tourist. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, tourists may not disembark from the vessels. Boo. Did we pack enough shoots is the kind of question you ask before you take off. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> no, no, we do it on re-entry every time. Every time we're like in the middle of like the ion storm of re-entry and we're like, do we pack enough parachutes? Should have brought safety lights instead of parachutes. Well, I mean, already we're like, the wind's not being a problem anymore. The ablator is not even ablating. It's not doing anything. We'll keep the butt end uh, there because if we go sideways, there's a good chance the aerodynamic forces will rip us apart. Oh, there we go. We can drogue. And I will drogue as early as possible. And our speed continues to drop. The drogues aren't even fully deployed yet. I think they fully deploy at 5k above surface. And we can probably disable the SAS at this point. Famous last words. Oh yeah, we can, we can, because we can actually deploy the rest of the chutes. And you know, safety first, let's deploy all the parachutes. I'm gonna do another hard save here before I do some more time warping. Time warping with parachutes put out, usually a really bad idea. And actually reloading with parachutes put out, also a really bad idea, but it's fine. Oh yeah, we can drop the, uh, the shield, that's true. I always forget that, it's not something that comes up very often. Um, but it does reduce the weight. Okay, it's a little awkward here because the chutes aren't fully deployed yet. So the this is being attached the same way. We could maybe like move around there. Drogues are fully deployed. Heat shield goes away. Still dropping at 24 meters per second, but our primary chutes have not been deployed yet. They'll fully deploy at about a one kilometer above the surface. There they go. Ooh, G-forces! And we're only dropping at five meters per second. Look at that. Kind of funny we're still nose first, but this is this is heavier. 
Then like with the drogues, I was I was expecting it to be the other way around. G forces. Yeah, for all I know, the impact limit on this is four, but I think it's six. I think six is the lowest impact um, number of any part in Kerbal. That becomes a submarine. Could have brought a bathymetry sensor with us. All right, we're ready for splashdown. We're still at four times speed as well. So let me stop that. And there you go. So it's going to be really gentle. Look at this. Super gentle. Huge success! Unless I misread the contract. Amazing! Then we get picked up and we go home. I actually can't believe how well that went. I can't believe how like nice the rocket looked, how all the numbers just worked out to be really convenient. It was like, these are ideal numbers. We had tons of excess Delta B, which really for, for, for tourist flights, you know, we're bring we're bringing safety up from a you know safety third to maybe a safety second. Okay, well, this mission was has pulled into question that safety lights are the cause of safety. Uh huh. Done, done, done. Uh, contract parameters. Stage recovered. Some bits destroyed, but some there. Uh, full contract completed for each one of these individuals. Because I think we could have done. We didn't have to do them all at once. We could. Oh, and Fallen God Zero. Getting some things, Mach 3. Passenger transport ribbon, nice. I think we could have done them individually, but it probably would have cost more. Um, but yeah, nice. Tourist from destination. It's basically the same mission, but with fewer people. If we could get two of these missions, we could complete them both at the same time. Omega Ice and Zlelin 1922. Here, I'm gonna grab it. It's more cash advance and things too, which is gonna be nice. I mean, we needed the money because we're going to need some upgrades and stuff, but we'll also need the science. Uh, magnetic field survey around Eve. I'm going to take this. This might be what we do next week. This could be completed with a flyby. We might do that. Position a satellite in specific orbit of Kerbin. These are good ways to just make some money. I mean, this is a total of over 100k cash from doing a launch that you can do it with a very cheap ship. And I can do these launches in my sleep. I can't take another mission, but that's okay. I mean, we still have to technically explore the moon because we got this like after we did, st oh, it's because we didn't return. We returned to Kerbin from a flyby of the moon. Yeah, we never completed that. So maybe next week, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the other stage leaves to see another flight. Well, we got recovered something. I don't know. I think we recovered that stage. We lost, because we got something we were told got destroyed, but I think it was just the boosters that we just ditched, because they're cheap. But yeah, the other stage, I'm pretty sure we recovered. Which means we got, like, probably half our money back. I'm not sure exactly how it breaks down between the passenger modules and the engines and the mostly empty fuel tank, but we should have gotten a fair amount of it back, which is pretty good. And that brings us to about 4 p.m., perfect place to wrap this up. Uh, we've got a lot of really interesting missions in line for next week. Uh, so we'll see what that does. Oh wait, and by next week, I mean not next week, because next week I will be in Los Angeles for the Unite conference, the Unity programming, game programming uh, uh, engine conference in LA. So maybe I'll see some of you guys there, I don't know. So there'll be no Monday stream, I believe there'll be no Wednesday stream next week. However, this week, there will be a Wednesday stream in two days where either we're gonna start a brand new Civ game, because we finished it last week, or maybe we'll play something else other than Civ. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how we feel and, and stuff and play it by year. But that'll be that. Uh, so thank you very much for coming out today. We're going to wrap it up now. I got some other things I need to record and do. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye, folks.